Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would love to introduce my wonderful co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zars. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. You know, I'm on the road again. And I'm, I'm currently uh, in, Yeah, I know. I'm currently in the Newport News area. So um, I'm here at Fort Eustis. So big shout out to the team here at Fort Eustis for, for uh, you know, holding me down and getting me a a corner or a closet to do this show in. So I'm, if I, if we, no, nah, I'm not in a closet. I'm actually in the, in the office. But uh, but no, nah, I'll, I'll be going to Langley tomorrow, and then uh, I'll be going to Dan Daniels Distribution Center here in the area in Four Story as well. So looking forward to uh, showing love to the associates here. Uh, but then on Friday, I'm flying up to Philly for the big game, right? Yes. Absolutely. So uh, we got some a special guest that um are very, very much so invested in this game. So uh, without further ado, Emily, please introduce today's guest. We are really excited to have these guests joining us today, just days away from the yearly showdown between Army and Navy on the gridiron. They will be calling the game for Westwood One Radio and their insight and knowledge of this rivalry are unmatched. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to John Sadik and Ross Tucker. Hey. Hey guys, hello, thanks hello. for having Thank us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Oh man, the pleasure is all ours and uh we appreciate both of you joining us today. So, um John, can you let our viewers know where you're joining your, where you're coming from right now? I am coming from the glorious city of Cincinnati, Ohio. This has uh, been my home for a couple of years now. I came out here uh, to call games for the Cincinnati Reds on television on Valley Sports Ohio. Uh, it's an outstanding place to raise a family. And uh, I see uh, a lot of folks that are in service. I, I often fly out of Dayton, and uh, there are many Air Force folks that are in and out of there on a regular basis. But uh, greater Cincinnati for me. Okay. Well, big shout out to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base out there in Dayton, Ohio. I'm very familiar with that base as well. Uh, and, and Ross, can you let us know where you're joining us from? Absolutely. I, I am in the state capital of Pennsylvania in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, not far actually from the Army War College down the road in Carlisle. And I don't know if we get into this later or not, but my mom was born in Fort Lewis, Washington and graduated from Fort Knox High School in Kentucky. She was an Army brat. Uh, I think went to maybe 17 different schools from, oh, from uh, kindergarten through college, Germany a couple times. So um, I know we'll say it again later, but thank you to all of you for everything you do. It's very cool that you're joining us. I know John and I feel the same way, and we're really excited about the game on Saturday. Absolutely. Now, so, John, speaking of Cincinnati, you've been – a radio and TV commentator for years now. So how long have you been calling the Army Navy game specifically? Uh, this will be my ninth consecutive year on the call of this game. And uh, every year I get goosebumps. Every year I, I get a little bit of tears. Every year I just feel that emotion peak. Uh, it is about the day, the pageantry, and then one of the most intense, hard-hitting games that exist. And I'm uh, very honored to, to be on the call for a ninth straight season. No, I love that. Ross, what about you? This is my seventh. The first three, I was on the sideline. And then oh. the last four, I graduated up into the booth. And uh, like John, I love it. It's actually my single favorite day of the year. Every year, if, if you want to feel good about our country, if you want to feel patriotism, if you want to feel uplifting upbeat happy army navy's the game to go to ross in the time you've spent calling the army navy game what are some of the standout moments you've experienced oh that's that's pretty easy actually um i would say the the first one for me um i got indoctrinated quick you know, even though I grew up outside of Philadelphia, I never had gone to an Army-Navy game. 
My mm. first Army Navy game, I was on the sideline in Baltimore. And John can tell you the year, but I want to say, I guess it was 2016 or 2017, 2016. And Army had lost um, a bunch of times in a row. Um, and they had not been able to beat Navy. And it's my job to interview the head coach of the winning team after the game. Well, Army wins for the first time in like 20 years or whatever the number is. It's John knows it exactly, but it's like 14 years, right? And all of a sudden, they're not really supposed to do this, but all of the cadets came down, all of them came down out of the stands onto the field and started running onto the field. So first of all, I'm telling my producer, I have no chance of, <laughs> of getting an interview with Jeff Munkin. And secondly, I'm under attack. I am under attack from the Army ground soldiers right now. I'm one of the few civilians that knows what it li is like to be under attack from the ground forces of Army. <laughs> And that's not a good place to be. I can tell you that. <laughs> that's, not a good, that's not a good position to be in. No, I love that. And then, John, what about um, you? Any memorable moments or games that stand out to you between these two teams? Uh, for me, there are two that really stand out. The next year, 2017, it was back in Philadelphia. And that was one of the five times in the 122 games that have been played between these teams over the years that snow fell. And Army was honoring the Mountain Division and wearing almost all white unis that basically camouflaged them into the all snow <laughs> turf. That was a fantastic <laughs> scene, perhaps only topped by in 2020 when it was played on campus for the first time since World War II due to COVID restrictions and a dense fog rolled in off the Hudson at West Point. And armies in the, the olive drab unis against a field of the same color with fog so thick the coaches came down at halftime because they couldn't see from upstairs and Ross and I are calling the game. That was awesome. So how's it like to call a game from as high as you are in the booth uh, with fog, a, a thing of fog over the whole entire field? Uh, basically, we had to go almost exclusively off the monitor. There were stretches, not the entire game, but a little more than a quarter, where you could not identify anybody. You could hardly even see the outline of a person, let alone accurately say who it is or what they're doing or where the ball is in a game where some form of uh, subterfuge with the option is just generally part of football. And then you combine that dense fog. But it, it was a lasting memory. And thank goodness the TV cameras were low enough that the, the monitor we had in the booth helped a lot. Gotcha. So, uh, John, as you know, uh, as we all know, you call the Navy games and then Ross calls the, the Army game. So uh, is there a rivalry between you two? Do, do you go to, uh, I, don't, I don't know, do you go to Ross and, and fill his carp with popcorn or does Ross put a banana <laughs> in a tailpipe uh, during the game? Like, is there is there some type of little, little rivalry y'all have between each other? Uh, not quite like that. I mean, we do like to take little <laughs> little pokes at each other here and there along the way, but that's just being partners and being friends. Uh, you know, for, for me, my loyalties are really on, on both sides on a personal level. Uh, I mean, I had grandfathers that served on both sides in World War II. My mother's father was part of the original Army Rangers with uh, Darby's Rangers. He was uh, shot in, while he was in battle. He returned to battle. Uh, he was a POW for 18 months. Uh, and my father's father uh, took heavy mortar fire and helped land ships. Uh, out in Japan. And uh, so they, they both spent many years out there in service, uh, both saw their fair share of action. And, uh, and for my house, I have multiple family members, cousins, uncles, extended cousins. My grandmother was one of 14. I have over 100 cousins on that side uh, that are in all forms of service, including a, a recent Navy grad. But for me, I, I'm on both sides. No matter who wins, we all win. Now, so let's dig into the matchup a little bit. So, Ross, Navy leads the all-time series 62 to 53 with seven ties. How are you feeling about the Army's chances going into the game this week? Pretty good. You know, I think it's interesting. I think most years there's sort of a, a team that's had a better season. There's a team that's the favorite. Now, last year, by the way, that was Army. 
and Navy knocked them off. Navy pulled off the upset and won the game with a tremendous second half. And I'll say this in terms of the rivalry between John and I. We both have relationships with the some of the players and coaching staffs on the teams that we call the games on television for, for CBS. But we both also see the big picture. You know, I mean, I was really happy for the Navy kids last year. They had a rough year, a couple of rough years. And for them to get that win over the Army last year, that was huge for them. And they deserved it. They played better in the second half. They deserved to win the game. So I was happy for them. This year, boy, this is a toss-up. It feels like it, it, one thing that's really good is both teams are playing their best football right now. You know, Navy's been outstanding. They almost beat Notre Dame. They beat a top 25 ranked UCF team on the road. Navy's playing their best football of the year. They're running it much better than they were. And Army just dominated UConn and UMass. They really dominated Troy before that. The Sun Belt champs, they should have won that game. They had some uncharacteristic turnovers. So this is about as even, I think, if if you're into that kind of thing and you look at the point spreads or whatever, it's about as even of a game as there's been in a long time. So that that's good for John and I, right? And that's what we root for, right? We just want a close game, make it as exciting and as entertaining as possible for as long as possible. And so, John, one thing everyone looks forward to each year I know that I do. Leading up to the big Army-Navy clash is the uniform reveals. What's your take on Navy's uniform this year? I love it. Uh, you know, salute to the astronauts. Uh, the Naval Academy has produced more astronauts than any other college in the United States, in the world. Uh, 54 different astronauts have come from the Naval Academy, and the layering and the look are just outstanding. Uh, I, I thought the uniform reveal was supreme. The uh, the pants on the side panel, they have the pin that was adopted in 1963 that was first given to the Mercury 7 astronauts. Alan Shepard, Navy class of 45, the first man in space, uh, was part of the uh, initial heralding of that group. And I'm kind of a space nerd myself. Uh, little known fact, before I decided to work in sports, uh, my original interest when I took my SATs, I put down that my uh, major would be astrophysics. Uh, the more I looked into it, I, I didn't want to get a terminal degree. Other things happened. I loved sports, and here I am talking with you guys. But I, I feel like worlds collide a little bit in seeing that uniform look. I, I think they're fantastic. And, Ross, how about Army's tribute to the old Ironsides? It's awesome. Uh, it's very, very cool. It's funny. When you go up to West Point, you can actually see all the uniforms that they've used in Army Navy over like the last 10 years. And you can see also some of their alternate uniforms. I think it's actually a really cool aspect of going to one of these schools and playing for them is all the different uniforms you get to wear, especially in the Army Navy game every year. And I, I just love like the camo green for Army, uh, for everybody looking at it there. I, I love that. Um, and maybe they'll blend in with the uh, Lincoln Financial Field turf a little bit. I, feels like feels like twice in the last five years, Army's had an advantage with their uniform color and the weather. We'll see what happens on Saturday. But by the way, one of the little details that I love in that Army uniform is the mud splatter that's not only ingrained in the jersey, but is in the helmet. It's supposed to look like the mud that was actually part of the campaign in Africa. And the, the font that they use there is the same font for the numbers on the M3 tanks. I mean, the, the layering of oh, wow. history that goes into these uniforms is really awesome. Yeah, no, those uniforms are, are really, really sharp. And um, I'm hoping for great weather for myself because uh, I'll be out there in a, in a service uniform, even though I'll be in an Air Force service uniform. But, you know, those socks aren't that thick. I can tell you that. So hopefully uh, <laughs> there's no precipitation and nothing weird going on. And um, it, and so last year was my first year going to the Army Navy game when it was in uh in New Jersey, and I I really you know being in the Air Force I I knew that it was a big deal, but you don't really realize how big of a deal or how big of a tradition this is until you kind of witness it in, in person. And so uh, you all are part of this huge tradition, and how different is it from calling this game versus vice any other game? Well, it's uh, it's 
drastically different on a bunch of different levels. You know, this is the only game on. Any other game I do, certainly in college, there's other games being played. This is the only FBS college football game on Saturday, which makes it very, very special because all of the eyes and the ears of the country will be on this game. Obviously, a lot of people watch it on CBS, but a lot of people will listen to it driving around. Uh, maybe they're going uh, Christmas shopping or whatever, because I get text messages every year. And it's really a cool environment because it's rare to be in a stadium where half the fans are there for one team, half the fans are there for the other. Usually you're at a home stadium and there's a home team. For this Absolutely. game, it's a neutral site. So it's really cool. There's a loud roar no matter who does something, right? Because yeah. there's enough people there that they create the noise and then just the pregame stuff, the flyover, the march on, uh, it's really, it's more of an event than it is just a football game. The football game is part of a bigger event. Yeah, I would totally echo that. I, I think one of my favorite things that happens with all the pomp and circumstance before the game is the prisoner exchange, where a handful of students that spent a semester at the other institution are finally reunited with their classmates at midfield. And uh, the opposing school has often taped some form of message for the opponent onto the back of their jackets. It's a really, really cool scene. Uh, the March On is uh, an incredible event and occasion. And to Ross's point, the entire student bodies of both schools are there. I mean, when can you say that about any college oh, yeah. football experience? Every current student is there, and they are into it, and they all can benefit even beyond the pride of the game because usually there's some form of incentive that gets enjoyed by the winning students. Now, and speaking of students, Ross, you touched on this a bit a second ago, but just how exciting it is to see two teams that are so nicely matched up this season. So let's talk about the talent on the field. Who are you most excited, John and Ross, who are you most excited to see on the field? Well, there's a, there's a bunch. Um, usually it's seniors, although interestingly, Navy is a really young team. Uh, they only have four seniors starting, which bodes extremely well for them moving forward. Um, you know, Army, though, has the best pro prospect in decades in this game. And the rule changed a couple years ago where you can now go to the NFL. Uh, you don't have to immediately serve your five years. You can hold off on that till a little bit later and you can try to use your physical ability. And that's Andre Carter, a defensive end for Army. He's projected by some people to be a first round pick. Had an unbelievable junior campaign with 15 and a half sacks. Hasn't had quite as many this year because he's gotten a lot more attention. He missed a couple games due to injury. But I'm looking forward to watching him play one more time, although he's more of a pass rusher. And maybe might not pass the whole game. So I don't know. I don't know how many sacks he's going to get in this one. This is not necessarily, you know, Andre's type of game. But I'll still be looking forward to watching him one more time. He just moves so smooth. He moves like a cat at almost 6'7", 260 pounds. Man. I'm very eager to see him play again. Uh, he had that tip pick against Air Force last season. He's so nimble, uh, and he certainly projects so well on the professional level. His size uh, stands out significantly. And I'm also interested to see how Xavier Arline handles things. You know, Arline had a chance to start this game in the past. He also was going to be a big part of the puzzle for Navy last year and got hurt in the first few offensive plays for Navy on a 10-yard run and was lost for the rest of the game. Um, he's an outstanding lacrosse player who was a big part of Navy's upset over a ranked Army team in overtime this last lacrosse season. And due to injury, he is in that starting role yet again. He's very small but very nimble, and he's been a big part of Navy's renaissance in the late stage of the year. Awesome. So we have service members in America's Armed Forces and their families that are watching us live right now. What would you guys like to say to them today? And Ross, we'll start with you. Well, I kind of said it a little bit earlier. Um, 
I'm going to try and do this without getting emotional. <laughs> you know, my, my grandfather made a career in the military. Uh, my mom's dad, he was a captain, U.S. Army, served in World War II. And um, I think probably as a result of that and having my mom be an Army brat that lived, I mean, my aunt was born in um, Alaska. I mean, they lived all over the place. I just have so much respect and gratitude for everything that all of you do. And when I say all of you, I really mean all of you, not just the service men and women, but the families, because they're involved in this thing as well. You are serving the country in my mind also. And two things you should know. Uh, number one, my daughters are nine and 10, and they know that anytime we are anywhere and they see a man or woman in uniform, they go up to them, shake their hand and say, thank you. That's something we taught them really early to the point where now they'll say, daddy, like they'll point and I'll say, go ahead. And they'll go over and they'll say, thank you. And I think that's kind of like the least we can do, right? I also, you know, if I ever am at a restaurant or something and there's, we're actually pretty close to Fort Indian Town Gap here in Pennsylvania. So if I go to a restaurant and I, I see some of the reserves there, always pick up the tab. I, I know it's just small gestures, but that's the point, right? It's, it's the gesture. It's the showing of appreciation that I feel like is the least we can do. And I want you all to know that John and I both feel that way. It's one of the reasons why we love doing this game so much. Yeah, and I would How echo exactly you? what Ross. Uh, yeah. Apologies, I, I would echo exactly what Ross uh, relayed. Is that uh, thank you? I mean, from the the deepest portions of our heart, thank you for all that you do, uh, for the the sacrifices that you make, for what it does to your family, what it does to your time, and the the risks that you take that are inherent with it. Uh, there is a calling that comes. Uh, for those that serve, there is great meaning and depth to that, and it is something that is constantly recognized. I think this is a day where we can uh, shine a different sort of light uh, for an extra sense of that appreciation, and uh, I hope that we can play some small part in, in trying to shine that light as best we can. And we just richly say thank you, and uh, we, we cannot truly give words to express that depth of thanks. No, and we do have a few questions and comments in the live feed. So um, Mark is checking in. Eddie says, good afternoon. He's going to be looking forward to watching the game on Saturday. Go Army beat Navy. Um, he's checking in from Birmingham, Alabama. And we have a question from Connor. Hey, guys, thanks so much for taking the time to help the military community get hyped for the game. What do you guys think makes military football special and distinct from other leagues games? Ooh, can I start on that one, John? You got it. Two, two things that really jump out to me. So you see the helmets I used to play. I was an offensive lineman, okay? I was not a great pass blocker. I love the way Army and Navy and Air Force play. I was built to play for Army and Navy and Air Force. You know, it seems like all the other teams in college football run – pretty much the same offense, right? They all have a spread offense with the zone read, the RPO, not Army, Navy, and Air Force. In my mind, maybe I'm biased, but the academies play football the way God intended football to be played. <laughs> I love the physical style. I love watching them. I love watching the end zone copy on the film to see the offensive linemen, the blocking. Like To me, that's, that's the good stuff. So that's number one. And number two, Guys like Andre Carter notwithstanding, you know, I, I was fortunate to play in the NFL for a while, and I know there's other big rivalry games, right? Like, like last weekend, Michigan-Ohio State. Well, mm -hmm. I played with a bunch of guys in the NFL from Ohio State. You know, they care about beating Michigan, but they really care about making the NFL, right? I mean, they're a really gifted kid. They're really talented. It's sort of a stepping stone for them. That is not the case with Army and Navy. This is it for 99% of them. They're not going to the NFL. This is the game. This is it. This is everything. And I just think that's a big difference. The other guys 
are dealing with NIL money and agents and the pros and for Army Navy, for these guys, the seniors, right? It's this game and then service makes it entirely different. Yeah, I would say for me, when you're dealing with service academy football, you you have such mirror like teams going against each other. They're built very similarly. They recruit largely against each other. Most of the stars in this game were recruited by each other service academy, and they elected to go where they went to, which has its own form of you know built in kind of. Uh, um, resentment is too strong, but a, a rivalry of sorts. Um, the As a result, the strategy takes on an even more layered effect. Uh, the, there are fewer possessions. Both teams want to possess the ball a lot. Trick plays are a giant part of this game, whether they work or backfire. And there's a certain magic in those moments when they're attempted and even moreover when they're accomplished. And uh, and to also echo something that Ross first shared with me when, when he was initially down at the sidelines, and maybe he can expand on this, he touched on the physicality. You know, Ross, you've talked about how the, the type of hits that happen in this game, that's what football is, it's a contact sport, are just a different level of almost ferocity because of the depth of meaning that this game has and that we are witness to on every play. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, if you like the old school football, this is the game for you because unlike a lot of these other games, they pretty much know for the most part it's going to be a run. And yeah. they are up yeah. on the line of scrimmage and the O-line is coming out and the D-line's coming out. And they a lot of times even have a pretty good idea what play's coming. So it gives the defense a chance to even have a fuller head of steam. And um, it's uh, – if you – look, that's what I miss the most about playing, you know, is the I, – I miss the contact. I miss the physicality. I miss the violence. Like that's – I think it's okay to say that. Uh, this game will have that, I can assure you. Yeah, I can agree that there's more dog piles per capita in this game than any other game that I've ever seen. <laughs> awesome. And I, and I do want to kind of circle back to those uh, those kind words that you uh, that, that John and Ross that you mentioned uh, about our military community uh, and, and the, the fact that, you know, you're you're training your daughters, to, you know, to to say thank you and 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 just the appreciation you have for the military community, man. We we um. We're all in this together. Um, we're all United States of America. We're all in this together. Uh, you know, even the people that can't go on the front line uh, with us, that's the support that we get uh, back home is, is is just paramount to, to success uh, of, of our country. So I want to thank you for that. And I do want to remind everybody watching that the 123rd Army Navy game presented by USA and the exchange with the exchange got some love in there too, um, airs at 3 p.m. Eastern on CBS. So where can viewers go follow you all on social media during and after the game, before, during, and after the game? Well, there it is. I like it. Um, you can check me out <laughs> at Ross Tucker NFL, Twitter, Instagram. Evidently, I'm on TikTok and uh, Facebook.com okay. slash Ross Tucker NFL. John and I will both be posting pictures and videos from the game and my specialty, which is the press box food, uh, Philadelphia is usually pretty good. I have high standards. So if you want to see what the, the folks up in the media are eating, you'll be able to see that on my on my Twitter and Instagram as well, at Ross Tucker NFL. I take it, as John can attest, irrationally seriously. You should see, <laughs> feel, and hear the emotion that sincerely spills out of him before the post when he immediately comes back. You won't believe what they have. There are full cheesesteaks with onions. <laughs> John and Ross, it's been such a great time talking um, to you both today. It means the world that you guys spent some time with us um, today. But before we let you go, I do have to get predictions from both of you on the game. Who is taking the win this year? Whew. Um, I'll start. I know, I know John and I, um, you know, it's tough to make predictions. Uh, I honestly, my biggest prediction is that it'll be a really close, competitive, awesome game. I would be stunned if either team ended up pulling away in, in any facet. Um, I guess I'd probably lean towards Navy a little bit just because of how well they've been playing. But 
that's what's great about this game is it's kind of a waste. Because last year I thought Army would win and Navy did. And other years you think it's Navy and Army does. So I guess I would lean Navy. But, man, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Army wins. To me, it's a coin flip. Yeah, I feel similarly. I think anytime you're dealing with a rivalry game, uh, anything truly can happen. And I think this rivalry is one of the best illustrations of that. Uh, these are two teams that are cut from the same cloth in many different ways. There's significant overlap in the coaching staff. They've endured some similar seasons that are short of their shared expectations. And I know we are going to have an intensely physical game that we're going to see at least one major play likely off of a trick play that I think will decide the game. Whether it works or it blows up, I, I think that's how the game will go. And I really have no feel for it right now, but I am glad for the glorious run that we're going to enjoy. This is a bucket list event. This is the can't miss. This is my favorite single thing I get to do every year, and I can't wait for Saturday. Absolutely. And as we all know, uh, no matter who wins on Saturday, uh, we're, we're all America's winning uh, at the end of the day. So uh, just, you know, highlighting both of those service academies and, and all our service academies uh, throughout the, the country. So uh, thank you all for that prediction. And for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m. Central on Tuesday, th December 13th, when Miranda Kwok and Melissa Carter, executive producers of Fox's The Cleaning Lady, join the chat. Also, mark your calendars for 11 a.m. Central on December 20th to hear from Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Brian Slade about his new book, Cleared Hot. So, uh, John and Ross, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it, it means so much to the military community, and we're, we're awesome. I, I mean, I'm looking forward to an awesome game on Saturday. And like I said, I'm I'm going to be there in the wrong uniform, but uh, I can't, I can't do anything about that. It's just, it, it comes with the contract, but um, uh, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, if you don't, if you all don't mind before we uh, get off the chat, uh, just sticking around to after the live to kind of say our formal goodbyes. But um, yeah, this means a lot to our military community and we appreciate you all for highlighting our service academies. Uh, uh, you all both have those, those radio voices that, that are, that, I mean, as soon as I'm talking to y'all, I'm like, okay, yeah, they're perfect for radio. Perfect. So uh, <laughs> thank you all for, for joining us. Not, not to say you all, you all are perfect for TV too. You guys had <laughs> a wonderful mugs as well. We but, got it. We got yeah, it. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for having us. And thank you for your support of this great game and for all that you do for, for service as well. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So just hold on just a second, but uh, we're going to end the chat. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in and Chief Chat out.